My favorite type of games are games I simply refer to as movement combat games. Games that focus around tight movement and interesting combat. And one of my favorite games of that type is one you've probably heard of if you're in the indie game scene called Neon White's gameplay centers around speedrunning, with cards having two uses as either a weapon to defeat demons or as a form of movement option to reach the goal faster. And I love this game. The amount of dopamine I get from seeing that I got a new time or beat a friend's time is astronomical and I'll never stop singing the praises of this game for as long as I can. But what if you're not into the speedrunning or movement tech part of these types of games, but you still want the shooty shooty of Neon White's card based combat system? Well, then you'd probably be into this game called... Developed by Brainwash Gang and published by Raw Fury Games, Friends vs Friends is a card-based 1v1 or 2v2 arena shooter with a cast of furry characters. While I'm comparing the two games for their similar use of cards as weapons, that's really where the similarities of these two end. While Neon White's focus is more on cards as either weapons or a new type of movement, Friends vs Friends' system is more built on making decks that best suit your individual playstyle of how you want to take down your opponent. Want to keep your distance and stand your ground? Take a sniper and pop some extra health for more accuracy. Want to get up close and personal? Grab a boomstick and extra speed and go to town. Want to be toxic? Equip some explosion resistance and spam bombs until the map looks like Oppenheimer. Hate guns? Use a katana, you fucking weeb! Friends vs Friends is fun, fast paced, and chaotic, all wrapped up in a PS1 era package. And the best way I can describe the gameplay is like that one game where you'd sit around the TV with your friends and play for hours without even realizing it when you were younger. Ah, my fucking eyes! I'm getting out of here. <laughs> the game, as the song intro explains, is all based around a group of friends purchasing a bunch of cards from a shady website that allows them to kill each other with no consequences, as they're seemingly brought back to life. So that's the in-game universe explanation for why these people are game ending each other. But where did they even buy these cards from? I don't know, get a mad pat on that, he probably has a new game theory about how this is all connected to the FNAF lore. Hello internet, welcome to game! The lobby in which you start the game is set in a dingy parking lot with a coffee shop, laundromat, electronic store, convenience store, garage, and a bus stop. Whereas of recording, only three of these actually serve a function right now. The coffee shop is where you can change your character, look at missions, build your decks, try out weapons, and buy new cards. So it's probably the place you'll spend the most time looking around. But in general, I would say to take a gander around the lobby to see some charming graffiti, as well as see the characters you've unlocked, as they inhabit the lobby when not in use. And they'll even ignore you when you annoy them, just like your friends in real life. Hi, how are you? 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 Shut your fucking mouth! Deck building is probably something you'll use the most time on in Friends vs Friends, as you must use a minimum of 25 cards while not going over 50 power. So it's not too hard to understand, but it's really tough to choose what cards you want, especially when you just pull a new cool sounding card and you have to choose what to discard to try it out. The decks you build really are all about the way you want to play certain matches. And my Yu-Gi-Oh obsessed brain immediately went to name my first and very 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 bad deck, Duelist Kingdom. <clears throat> And I named my current deck Battle City. Can you tell that Konami has rotted my brain yet? The cards all have fun and unique effects and are organized in six groups, which are buffs, like making yourself faster or seeing through walls, debuffs, such as making your opponent have a bigger head or emptying their magazine, weapons, which just swaps your standard Boira to whatever weapon card you have, or if you're a big brain genius, use it as a quick reload instead, as the gun you equip always comes with a full mag. Um. Fuck reloading, I'm just taking a new boy <laughs> My eyes! Helper cards, which range from turrets and flashbangs to placeable walls and bear traps. Wild cards, which as the name suggests, greatly change how matches are played. Be it turning yourself into a giant, passing a bomb around like a hot potato, or nuking everything to change the map. And finally, trap cards that are used as a kind of gotcha. Be it using the substitution jutsu from Naruto, countering the next card your opponent plays, or fuck it, self-destructing take out both you and your opponent, cause why should you be the only one to lose? The card and deck based combat really makes friends vs friends stand out from other arena games. Only starting with a portion of your deck and drawing more with each round really makes you consider your options for what the best strategy is against your friends. Should you use as many cards as you can to try and secure your win? 
Or maybe play more conservatively and gather a bigger pool of cards for the next round. What if your cards become invisible or spiked or even both? Is it smartest to save cards or just sacrifice some HP to use a card that may give you the win? Things like that make each round of a game really unique and really put your reaction time to the test. Other than cards, the game features 10 different characters you can play as that you unlock as you gain levels. Each character you play as has a unique effect that also plays into how you play your cards, with characters such as Moo Salto having a double jump and Duck Anderson having a heal card, or Mick Raver and Stevie Gull starting each round with a Brass Hopper and Golden Boyer respectively. My personal main is Spike Remington, not only because his shots deal more damage than others, but also because he's a little cutie cat. So not only do you have the cards to take into consideration, but also the character you're playing as. Also, you didn't hear this from me, but if you want to be toxic as fuck, just equip little Lars and make a deck full of bombs. You will make your friends hate you faster than Haro with a speed buff card. And when you don't want to play just for fun, you can also do missions. Unlocked after level 6 and 18, you get daily and weekly missions you can complete for big XP boost and Pell Prize coins, which you can use to unlock avatars, card backs, gun charms, and even character skins. I got the old skin for Spike, so I, uh, I, I was pretty happy about that. And if that wasn't enough for you, they just recently updated the game with what I think is supposed to be like a battle pass system? They're basically just more missions you can do for special rewards, which, um... I, I can't wait to unlock level 14 on that. The game only features five maps so far, but honestly that doesn't matter because each of the five maps offer enough variety in themselves that you don't really ever feel bored of a map. And matches go so quick anyway that sometimes you honestly want to redo a map over again just for the hell of it. Ain't no, 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 Let's go! Best, best, map. Uh, best no. map! Best no, map! Best no, map! No, no. Best no, no, map! No. Only based people like this map. Like in the comments if you agree. Shut the fuck up. And each map has so much life to it. Just taking a look around at some of the backgrounds, like the billboards and trucks, the ads and rooftop, the graffiti in the subway station, and the scribbles and island. Hey look, it's Wiggle Fox. How wholesome. The game doesn't feature much in terms of music while you're in a match, just the diegetic sounds of the arena, and I think that's kind of deliberate. With how much this game focuses on playing with friends, smack talk is inevitable, and being able to talk without being drowned out by music actually kind of works in the game's favor here. I'm using a med kit, fuck you. Oh, you a bitch for that one, for real. <laughs> nah, 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 nah. No. I'm, bro, I'm a winner, that's what you mean. <laughs> Winners can be bitches! Let's go! Okay, I'm not good. <laughs> Music is mostly saved for moments of rest, like in between matches and in the lobby. The game is still being updated with more cards, more stages, more missions, and more NPCs. And in the future, we might even get more characters to play around with. So there's that. There's not much more I want to say about this game, other than the social media manager said that I can kiss Spike Remington on the mouth. So uh, this game will have my support for a long time. I'm going to link the Steam page for Friends vs. Friends in the description. Um, I'm not sponsored or affiliated with Friends vs. Friends or any of the game mentioned or shown in this video, but I really think more people should check this game out. I want to see more support for this game and see it prosper for many years to come because I think it's such a blast to boot up and have a few hours of fun with friends. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope you'll give this game a chance and please don't come back. Have a great day. See ya. Just like, Get you, no eyes. my fucking eyes. <laughs>